OK, so now we're going to look at f of x equals arc cos x, and we're going to apply some transformations to it. Now, if you haven't met arc cos x yet, you actually have in the sense that you will have met the inverse of cosine at GCSE, when you had to inverse cos both sides, for example. Arc cos x is if you haven't met it before, an alternative notation to writing down inverse cosine of x. Okay. Now, you won't have met what it looked like uh, at GCSE. Um, so, a very, very brief um, look into where this originally comes from. Um, but we will see it later on in the videos. Um, so, cosine... is a curve that looks like this between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. Now what we do, well, cosine actually kind of keeps going, right? You know, it doesn't just stop at 0 and 2 pi, it does keep going. But the concept is we cut it so that the function is 1 to 1. So what that means is we cut it so that um, if you were to draw a horizontal line across the curve, that horizontal line would only cross at most once. Okay, so if I cut it at zero and I cut it there at pi, then that makes the curve one to one. And what it does is it gives me a curve that I can find the inverse of. Now, an inverse function is found by reflecting it in the line y equals x. So these points that are important to it, uh, the 0, the 1, the pi over 2, and the pi minus 1, OK, so that's down at minus 1, they all get reflected in y equals x. So my curve looks like this. So 0, 1 is at 1, 0. Then we go up and then across. Okay, so this point here will be at minus one, that's at one. This point is at pi over two, this point is at pi. Okay, this is the curve of y equals arc cos x, and it all comes from the original cosine curve being reflected in the line y equals x. That is the whole of the curve. It doesn't repeat going down or above. That is it. OK? So what we're going to do is we're going to use that curve and we are going to apply these transformations to it. Now, this first one, we've got y equals 3f of x minus 1. So really, it's all about saying what you see. I mean, we see that there is a 3 out the front. That's a stretch parallel to the y-axis, factor 3. So that would give us the y equals 3f of x. And we've also got this x minus 1. So that's a translation by the vector 1, 0. So that replaces the x with x minus 1. And we get precisely what we wanted. So we can go through this process looking at each of the coordinates in turn and see what's happened. So 1, 0 over here, stretch scale factor 3, so it stays where it is, but it gets translated 1 to the right. So it's getting translated over here to 2, 0. This point here, 0 pi over 2, will get stretched to 3 pi over 2, and then translated 1. So we're going to have this point here at 1, 3 pi over 2. Then we've got this third important point, the minus 1 pi, stretched so that it's at minus 1, 3 pi, and then translated 1 to the right, and so that would put it up here at 0, 3 pi. And so the curve would look something like that. OK? So it would be the curve translated along, oh, sorry, stretched and then translated along.
OK? When in actual fact, you could do this in either order. You could translate it and then stretch it if you liked. You get exactly the same curve. OK? So that's the first one. Now, number two, well, let's just write down the equation of that. So just to be consistent, so we would have y equals 3 arc cos of x minus 1. OK, that would be the equation of this new curve. So number 2, y equals 2f of x plus pi. So what do we see? We see that we've got this 2 out the front. So that's a stretch uh, parallel to the y-axis, factor 2. So that gives us the y equals 2f of x. We've then got this plus pi. So that's looking like a translation by the vector 0 pi. OK, so that would be y is equal to 2 f of x. Replace the x, uh, the y with y minus pi. Add the pi to both sides. And we get precisely what they've got here. OK, now be aware that if you do these transformations the other way around, you will get something different. OK, so you would have done the uh, translation by 0 pi first. And then when you did the stretch, you would have ended up with a 2 pi. OK, so actually you would need to have done a translation by the vector 0 pi over 2 first, then the stretch by factor 2 parallel to the y-axis. OK, but we'll go through this way. Now, 1, 0 uh, stretched parallel to the y-axis factor 2 won't move, but when you move it by 0 pi, it will go up pi. So this point here will go up to 1 pi. Um, this point here, 0 pi over 2, will be stretched by a factor 2. So that will become pi, but then moved up pi. OK, so that will now be at 2 pi. And then this minus 1 pi, this point up here, uh, will go to minus 1, 2 pi after the stretch, and then minus 1, 3 pi after the translation. So minus 1, 3 pi, somewhere up here. So that you've got this curve that looks like that. OK, so make sure you're labelling all of the points that you need. Now, the equation that would go with it would be two lots of f, so arc cos x, and then plus pi on the end. Right, so finally, number three, y equals f of x minus 9. So, um, what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing a stretch uh, parallel to the x-axis, factor a quarter. So, y equals f of x. So, stretch x-axis, factor a quarter, will get us the y equals f of 4x. Then we've got this 9, this minus 9. So, that's looking like a translation by the vector uh, 9, 0. But what's going to happen is that we've got f of 4 lots of x minus 9, when the x is replaced with x minus 9, which gets us f of 4x minus 36. We just want 9, OK? So in order for that to be 9, this would have to have been 9 quarters to multiply by the 4 to make the 9. So this must be 9 quarters. So in actual fact, we've got a stretch parallel to the x-axis factor a quarter, followed by a translation by the vector 9 quarters 0. So 1 0 stretched to a quarter 0, and then translated by 9 quarters, so it's now at 1 quarter, we add 9 quarters, that'll get us to 10 quarters, so 5 halves. So it'd be somewhere over here. 
Now then you've got the pi over 2, 0 pi over 2. The stretch won't affect it. The translation will. So 9 quarters. Um, so if we do this, uh, probably makes sense to do this in decimal format. I mean, that would be 2.25. That would be 2.5. So it's a little bit shy of it. So something like this. Um, so there's your 9 quarters. There's your pi over 2. And then you've got the minus 1 pi, uh, which will become minus a quarter pi after the stretch. And then minus a quarter plus 9 quarters will get you 8 quarters, so 2. So 2 pi. So this curve will look something like that. Okay, so it will look quite narrow after its stretch uh, by factor of quarter in the x direction, and then its translation has moved it along. So the actual equation for this one would be arc cos of four x minus nine. Okay. So you might want to have a look at that on Desmos just to see uh, that that's right and to see the transformations at work.